to start, I need to make an accurate drawing so I can keep my sculpt in scale. I'm using my cell phone so I can trace the face of the owl. It's really important to get the spacing of the eyes correct when you're making animals or people. If the eyes are off, the whole thing will look odd. To get the proper sizing, I took a screenshot of the owl and shrunk it down on my phone until it was 2 inches tall and then I traced over that. Clay sculpts typically begin with an armature. I used a paintbrush and some pliers to twist some wire to give it added strength. I folded over the end and added some aluminum foil so I can begin sculpting the head. I rolled a thin sheet of Sculpey 3, which is polymer clay, and covered my aluminum ball. I used my drawing as a reference to make sure that the head was staying in scale. I used my cell phone as a flashlight to backlight my clay head and poked with a needle tool on the drawing where the eyes and beak fall on the head. I used my handy dandy Dollar Tree ball stylus to poke in where the eyes go. And then I started making a cane for the eyes. To do this, I created two elongated rectangles of clay and then I stacked them in this diagonal pattern. And when I put them through my pasta roller, it starts to make an ombre effect where it fades from one color to the other. I trimmed most of the yellow portion of the cane and folded it over on itself so it will be thicker. I wrapped this slab around a snake of black clay which will act as the pupil for the eye. Then I wrapped the outside in a thin sheet of black clay and cut the excess, and now I have an eyeball cane. The purpose of making the cane is so you can have multiples of the same design simply by reducing the polymer clay cane and cutting it into slices. I'm rolling the cane to reduce it in size. This is the pattern of the eyeball cane. I carried on rolling my cane until it was the proper size and then I cut two slices to create the eyes. I added the eye cane slices to the eye holes and covered them up with some white clay around the edges. Make sure when you create something like this you keep looking at your reference photo to keep it accurate. Hedwig looks a little ticked off and I think it's because she doesn't have a beak. So I rolled a ball of black clay into a cone and skewered it on the end of my dental pick tool. She's starting to look like an owl but she needs a body so I added some aluminum foil and some bits of wire for her legs and covered this with some clay. I beefed up the neck with some more clay and then it was time to make some wings for Hedwig. To make the wings, I rolled out a sheet of clay and I cut a shape that sort of looks like an ear and then I flipped this onto the other side to get a mirror image copy. This sculpt will be covered in feathers so it doesn't have to look perfect. I rolled some logs of clay and added them to the wire to make up some legs. Then I cut them to the right length. The feet are probably the most finicky part so far. I bent some wire and added liquid clay and white clay to keep them on the feet and then I trimmed the wire with some pliers. To finish off the feet I rolled some thin snakes of clay and added them to the bottom to create Hedwig's claws. At this point I finally popped Hedwig into the oven and then I started refining the shape using my X-Acto knife. I'm removing some areas where I think it may get bulky once I start adding the feathers and the fur. I'm using feathers that came from hens. These feathers were shed naturally from pet chickens, so they're cruelty free. To create small scale feathers, I am cutting a feather shape around the spine. What's this called? The main shaft of the feather. Depending on the length of your feather, you should be able to get two or three miniature feathers out of it. I ended up using more feathers than you see here, but I cut various shapes and sizes to cover my bird. My feathers are pretty see-through, so I cut some large out-of-scale feathers to act as a base layer to put smaller feathers on top. I painted Hedwig with white paint and now I'm spreading some water-based glue and laying down my largest feathers as a base layer. I cut lots of these short round feathers and this is the type of feather I'll be topping the chest and the wings with. My plan is to do long feathers, then the round feathers and top them all off with some fur. I'm using milk protein fiber but there are lots of furs that will work for this application. 
I'm adding fur to the chest and head as a substitute for the dense feathers birds have. The animals start looking really funny once you start adding the fur in this manner because you glue it on in little chunks and you have to let it just stand straight up and dry and then you trim it later. In order to add fur around the eyes, I am taking very small clumps of my fur and sticking it straight up and down around the eyeball. I follow the round shape of the eye as I do this and I do multiple layers. I continue furring in this manner until I have an absurd bird. Once the glue has dried, it's time to tame that crown. I use a small pair of sharp scissors and carefully cut small sections of fur. If you open your scissors really wide and try to cut big chunks at once, you end up cutting lines into the fur and it doesn't look natural. I used a thin layer of fur as a base for the feathers on my wings. I trimmed the excess and started gluing on my longer, thinner feathers. You can reposition the feathers while the glue is still wet and you can also try to do both sides at once so you make sure your pattern is symmetrical. To create the tail, I started laying down larger feathers in a symmetrical pattern. I end up adding more feathers later. I added small rounded feathers to cap off the long feathers on the wings. I used some of these wispy feathers and glued them to the top of the wings, the feet, and the chest. I really like how this finished off the look. I even added some of these feathers to the top of the head. I added some white highlights to the eyes off camera because I had to hold the bird so close to my face. The rest of her feathers got the chop and then I added some UV resin to her eyes and cured it with my UV flashlight. By this point, there were literally feathers everywhere. I touched up her nose because there was a little glue residue and now it's time to paint these spots. Snowy owls are not pure white, they have black details. All of the owls who portrayed Hedwig in the movie were male owls since the female owls have a ton of black and we probably wouldn't have recognized her as Hedwig. There was something missing on the face and I realized it was these little black shadows that come off of the beak. It is not easy getting some final glamour shots of this little white owl, but I really like how she turned out and I have some plans in the future to use her in a Harry Potter diorama, so make sure you're subscribed. Please like and comment below and thank you for watching. Bye.